digital presence. All right, it is Wednesday. It is noon-ish, as usual. Uh, I'm your host, Don Smith. This is the Life Radio Show. Uh, I hope everybody's having a better week than me, because I want to tell you about my week a little bit. Uh, before we get started, uh, I threw my, bra- my back out Saturday, which is bad enough, you know, when you throw your back out. I was doing some work at the club and reached around for something and twisted, and it felt like somebody was jabbing a dagger in my back. So I decided, once I crawled out of the restroom and you know, made, made it back to the showroom to get to my phone. But I come Sunday, I was in really bad shape and I could hardly walk. And I thought if I'm this bad Monday, I'm going to call into work and go to the doctor. Cause I always try to avoid the doctor. Doctors are usually bad news. So Monday I could barely get out of bed. I couldn't walk around without a cane, you know, just everything, everything hurt, you know, and I, I couldn't even put shoes on. I had to wear slippers cause I couldn't even reach down to tie my shoes. So I went to the doctor and as I'm sitting in the waiting room of the doctor, This couple walks in and goes up to the counter. Now, I didn't see their face. I just see them from the back as they're standing at the window, and uh, she's gorgeous, you know, the the woman of the couple. And I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's, you know, I'm going to check it out. I wasn't, like, creepy or I wasn't Louis C.K. in it or anything. I was just having, you know, I was just checking it out. Well, she turns around, and I graduated high school with her. Same, Same age as me. You know, and I, I don't, she's there with her 17 year old son. I thought they were a couple. This is how, how she looked at 41 years old. She's 41. I'm 41. We both graduated high school in 95. I don't want to say that she does, looks like she hasn't aged today, but what little age she has allowed to touch her has been so kind that she actually looked about 10 times better than she did in high school. And she was pretty then. And my first thought was why I should say hi. And then I thought, wait a minute. I'm sitting here unkempt. I feel like hell. My back's out. I'm walking around with a cane. I got a face full of gray beard hair. I'm probably 120 pounds heavier than I was in high school. And I'm wearing slippers because I can't tie my shoes. I look like I just escaped from a assisted living facility. And any minute now, they're going to drop an Amber Alert for a missing adult. I did not say hi. <laughs> so, Jess, if you're listening, I wasn't trying to be rude. I was just trying to be uh, incognito. <laughs> not my best of moments right there. But that has, that has just – that's painted the rest of my week. So the rest, I, the rest of my week can't possibly get any worse. But at the same time, that's a bad way to start. Uh, I forgot all about my back pain at that moment. <laughs> that was the least of my worries. Anyway, I'm in the studio. My guests are already in. Uh, Joseph Cox, a filmmaker extraordinaire, I've been told. He said so himself. And <laughs> That's generous. <laughs> I'm generous to myself, I guess. Well, that's Hey, if nobody else will be, you might as well. And, and sitting next to him is uh, actress uh, Sidney Vollmer. Vollmer? That yes, cr- okay. Vollmer. I got it right. Well, welcome to the show. I'm sorry I had to go on a little rant. No, just it's, talking it's about great. how, how it terrible enjoyable. my Monday was. <laughs> Your back was healed, man. It's my, miraculous. It was. It, it was. It was just like like the Lord Himself reached down and smacked me on the back and said, "There, you're still old and ugly, so don't bother talking to her." He's telling you to keep your back straight, man. Look good. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. I straightened my back up and everything popped back into place, and I was fine. The doctor said nothing's wrong with you, man. <laughs> no, but it, but don't worry if I seem a little loopy. I am on some muscle relaxers and. And and some of those kind of things today, and I have to go to work at three o'clock. So <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. But it's good to have you guys in the studio. Uh, I want to start me. off with, with you, yeah. Joe. Uh, what what have you been working on? What's what's so, going on? Uh, well, earlier this summer, actually, Sydney and I collaborated, and uh, we worked on the forty eight hour film project in Cincinnati, and we made a film called "The Windows Are Always Clean in Portland." And yes, it does sound pretentious, and that was the point. It was my, it was my way of uh, kind of poking fun at the indie films that kind of take themselves really too seriously. 
Um, there and, are a lot of those. Yeah, we did. We teamed up with <laughs> producer John Newkirk, and uh, we actually won the Cincinnati 48-Hour Film Project. Oh, awesome. And that film is going to go on to film a Palooza in Paris this March, uh, which is a lot of fun. And Sydney actually won Best Supporting Actress uh, in that festival. I did. Excellent. Did. Award winners. You might want yes, to pull that mic thank you. <laughs> that's right. So uh, currently... We, we, it's so seldom we get people that actually win things in here. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. I think that was my... Uh, my second or third award. Uh, yeah, you got some for Ellie, didn't you? Yeah, I've had yeah. a few. Wow. And then uh, <laughs> right now we're in the midst of releasing our web series Ground Rules for Living With Your Ex, which also stars Sydney. Um, and that was created by Jared Pettit, who is uh, our writer friend in New York, and he's uh, her co-star. Mm-hmm. And you can actually find that on YouTube right now. Uh, it's Average Joe Films Ground Rules for Living With Your Ex. And uh, there are currently five episodes out. The sixth episode released today. And it should be available right now online. Cool. And the finale of the season is next week. So what, what the, what's the show about? I mean, so, without without any spoilers. Yeah. I mean, and, the, and the title pretty much <laughs> gives a lot of it away. It does. But, it does. Uh, so <laughs> it's about these two people who uh, they are, like everybody, have a flawed relationship. And they, they're trying to coexist because they're too selfish to move out after breaking up. And each episode is, you know, coming up with a new ground rule for living with your ex uh, because, you know, things obviously get complicated when you're with somebody you cared about for so long. So uh, there's, you know, a little bit of drama, a lot of humor, and uh, there's a really, you know, fun dynamic between Jared and Sydney. I think they played off each other very, very well. Cool. That's, that's always good to have a good dynamic. Yeah, yeah. And so I think my character, she's kind of uptight. You know, she's the uh, girl that's had things planned out in her life. She works at a good job, uh, but her boyfriend's a goofball, and she loves it until he's not following her plan, and that kind of derails things for her. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, she still really cares about him, so she's juggling this... I really want my life to go this certain way and he's not giving that to me versus, but I still really care about him and I also don't see him with anyone else but me. So she has that planned out. Too. Yeah, yeah. My, she plans the breakout. My would be to run. Break- <laughs> <laughs> run as I mean, fast as you she can. She does create a list, you know, of rules for them living together after they're broken up. So One of them was do not eat my pudding. <laughs> that that <laughs> was actually one of the rules. Think one that of, always should be a rule. Yeah, <laughs> my pudding. Yeah. Another rule was that I get to watch, my character gets to watch two hours of Shark Tank yeah, every Shark day. Tank every night. And that was at an onset because I had been watching reruns of Shark Tank on YouTube, actually. And uh, my wife was making fun of me for it. And so I was like, well, I'm going to make this character watch Shark Tank all the time. I've never watched it. So. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. I, I really enjoy watching it. <laughs> Yeah. I've I've heard of it, but like many things, I've heard of them and I haven't watched. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, kind kind of like uh, well, kind of like doing independent film. A lot of people have heard of them. They just <laughs> watched it. That's right. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I I was doing some filming this past weekend. I made a comment about that because I was doing it as me as the host of the show, and that was one of the things I said. You might also remember me from several several micro budget, locally produced independent films you've never seen. <laughs> but tell all your friends you watch so you can feel artsy. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best description of the local film scene I've ever heard. Very true. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. Actually. Yeah, people ask me like, "Have you heard of this film?" And I said, "Yeah, I have." They said, "Have you watched it?" I was like, "I don't know if it ever got released." <laughs> yeah. there, there there have been so many that have not gotten released. See, yeah, I, I've been lucky lately. There, there for a while, I had a run of them that that I was involved in that never really got released. In fact, my first lead in a in a film that just it just crumbled. It got made. Oh. Everything got completed, and then the uh, the director his computer crashed and he lost most of the footage and never felt like picking it up again. So let this oh, be a lesson: man. back yeah. up all of your files. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Have a good absolutely. filing system. Back it up. And back up your backups because yeah. you never know. Oh yeah, you yes. never know. <laughs> but yeah, that that seems to be there there for a while with independent film. That that was what I saw as a lot of never getting finished. Mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately, the past couple of years, I've been involved with a lot of directors that absolutely do get their films finished, and usually, uh, well, almost without fail, they've gotten picked up by a distributor. So that's awesome. And I, that's, that's really the, that's, cool. I don't want to, I don't want to say it's because of me. 
<laughs> but you're not not saying. But I, right, I'm not. Don, I'm not somebody not has saying. to be on that box, and it's going to be you. <laughs> I, have, I have never made it on the box. <laughs> when I see you on the box, well, I'm going to buy not, that at Walmart. That's not true. I did make it on the on the box of Six Feet Below Hell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Re, yeah. Re, Reggie did make it on the box cover. And you worked with Brittany Picard on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brittany is awesome. She is absolutely one of my favorite people to work with. I I can understand that. Yeah, she's very very professional and very good at what she does. She actually was the star in uh, my science fiction film earlier this year called The Present. Oh, really? It was a it was a Christmas science fiction comedy <laughs> about time travel, and it was ridiculous. And she is hilariously awesome in it. <laughs> Now, did I see you're you're doing some work with Doug Lowe? <clears throat> yes, right I now am. as well. Because I I actually years ago I knew him in like school. <laughs> Doug is awesome. He is a a stage actor who just recently started acting on screen, and I, I, it was a shock to me. I I didn't know until after we had already wrapped his scenes, and he told me that it was his first time screen acting, and I was shocked because he was phenomenal. Yeah, he, he was. He was, uh, he was involved with the unwritten podcast. Because I hadn't seen him in years, and I ran into, ran into him in there. It's like I know you, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doug's great. We're uh, we're working on a like a science fiction noir type film right now. We're about halfway through. We'll be wrapping it up probably after the new year. And Doug plays a very shady character, and uh, it's really cool. It's cool. a lot of fun. Awesome. Can't tell you much about it right now. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> of course not. Of course, it's a not. secret. Mum's the word, man. Yeah, yeah. Stop I'm pushing sorry, me, Don. I'm, I'm sorry. I even brought it up. What, what <laughs> I should be fired from this show right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Sydney, you take over. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's your guys' show. I'm out. Uh, just... <laughs> so uh, what all have you been up to, Sydney? What we'll switch to you. I've been we up to? Yeah, Joe, over there. We've, yeah. we've talked enough about I you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Airtime yeah. and all the space. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I am See, I put you on sin- the spot. Now. Yes, you did. I'm a Cincinnati-based <laughs> actress, and I've been doing – work for you know like three and a half years probably um right now i'm doing a lot of work with an improv company in cincinnati called improv cincinnati oh very uh, creative yes for exactly <laughs> uh, but they're <laughs> right now the busiest they just thing. came up with it on the fly it wasn't scripted it, it was improv yep. <laughs> well coincidentally their name used to be coincidence improv and then <laughs> they wanted something that was more uh recognizable and google able Google, 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 Google. It's a word it's now. It's a word today. It's a word Google-able. today. Yeah, that's not that. Google-able. I improvised just it. Just take some practice. Don't you see how well I'm doing with improv? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but so I, I help them with a lot of their marketing because that's actually what my degree is in. So I, I take classes there. I'm on a team there. But right now they're really busy. They're doing a holiday show that's scripted and it's a Stranger Things parody. So That's scripted for an mm-hmm. improv troupe. Well, they wanted to do something like a sketch, so it's oh, like a okay. sketch holiday show, uh, and it has musical numbers, and I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but it sounds very interesting. It does, <laughs> except it the called? musical numbers. Uh, it's called Holiday at Hoppers, <laughs> and their first show yeah, is, uh, yeah, Friday at 8, <laughs> and but that got it got sold out, so they added another show. That's awesome. It's pretty do cool. Get, do they get licensing stuff from like? No, they don't have to because it's a parody. Oh, because it's a parody. It's okay, a parody. Cool. That's what I was just so, thinking. I was like, I was like, that would be a legal nightmare. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> um, it's a parody, par- so it's parody fine. Anything. Yeah, you can. I'm gonna parody Don. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think more people should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a parody myself. Actually, this isn't really me. <laughs> That's the only way I could keep from getting sued. That's right. Parodying myself because <laughs> I'm kind of a jerk when it comes to you know lawyering up. <laughs> I will represent myself. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. I will represent myself against myself, suing myself for portraying myself. <laughs> that just got complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so will you also be judging the case? Well, yeah, of okay. course. <laughs> Coming in 2018, directed by Joseph Cox, yeah, by starring <laughs> Don. As himself. As himself. <laughs> he will sue himself. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> for- fortunately, I know I'm broke, so I'm not asking for much. <laughs> <laughs> Just want that dollar, right? Just yeah, that, that's that's my last one. I gotta. <laughs> I need to go. I hit the dollar menu actually.
there's a reason they call them Lazy Sundays. There's nothing better than sitting around and enjoying the comforts of a good book. But what book should that be? Well, every Sunday, Eventide brings you The Bookseller, hosted by Jessica Gillen. Each week, Jessica breaks down a different book and tells you everything you need to know before cracking it open and getting lost in a whole new world. Tune in every Sunday for The Bookseller with Jessica Gillen, brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. Okay, we're back. See, I almost missed it. I was, I was messing with my phone. Almost missed it the, the coming back. We almost just sat here in silence the rest of the time without the rest of the show happening. Never text and host, Don. I know. I, I'm a terrible host. That's, that's the problem. That's the problem. I've been doing this for three years, and I haven't learned a dang thing, <laughs> except not to say what I was about to say. That's the, <laughs> that's that's the only right. thing I've learned. But, uh, yeah, well, nice it's a... Uh, Anyway, we're back. This is the Life Radio Show. Let me put my phone down and concentrate <laughs> on this show. This is the Life Radio Show, and if anybody's listened to my show before, you expect me to be distracted and kind of stupid. So we're right on track. We are right. <laughs> <laughs> Still sitting in the studio with Joseph Cox and Sidney Vollmer. Uh, how's it going, guys? What, what did we miss? Did we figure anything out during the break? Uh, we figured out that uh, we just met a guy who watched 40 Nick Cage films. Yes, uh, yes. In the last Ky- year. Kyle so. Steele stopped by from the uh, Nicolas Cage Movie Review Hour podcast. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know whether to be excited or sad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really wasn't sure. It's uh, sometimes, sometimes around, around Kyle, it's hard to say. It's right. hard to, you know, well, not it depends. Kyle, just <laughs> right, Nick right. Cage films in general. Yeah, well, we, uh, yeah, the, with, he, just dro- he just released the uh, podcast uh, with me on there where we got to sit down and watch bangkok dangerous Mm. which let me tell you was fantastic (laughs) in its uh in its uh terribleness in its terribleness was was it the room level terrible close it was real close i actually i actually have the room on dvd and that to me (laughs) cracks me up that is is cinema (laughs) gold right there it It is anytime you have to make a movie about how bad another movie is because the, the disaster artists they're making mm-hmm. right yeah. now about Tommy Wiseau's room. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it, uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, get on YouTube and just look up the highlights. And not to be confused unless with you're the Academy a chicken. Award-winning film yep. Room. Yes. <laughs> Very <laughs> different movie. <laughs> unless you're a chicken, cheap, 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 cheap. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite part about them making the disaster artist is that Tommy Wiseau thought that the room was Oscar worthy when he made it. And now the movie about how bad it was is, is Oscar actually worthy. Oscar worthy. <laughs> it's my favorite part. Uh, I just, I really want the Academy to let Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestro <laughs> present an award this year. It's they've got to let them do that. Oh yeah, absolutely. That would just present, be amazing. Yeah, have, yeah. I don't, it would be I don't the most. Know. I mean, they, do they want the ratings to go up or not? Mm. <laughs> but you know, you know, say say what you will about how terrible it is, because I mean, it was bad, but. He got it out there, and it's probably one of the most famous, terrible, low-budget movies there are. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> you have to you have to respect that they were willing to, you know, follow the dream and <laughs> you know, spend six million dollars <laughs> on a film that didn't make any money. Yeah, yeah. That, well, there's a lot of Hollywood studios who make films that I would say are worse than The Room, and they spent a lot more and lost a lot more. That that is true. That the Room at least true. has yeah, rewatch we, we value. Were, after all, we were just talking about Nicolas Cage. Because yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it costs way more than six million dollars just to get him to do a movie. It does. And, yeah, he's expensive. Uh, yeah, it's not much better. Yeah, I've I've, I've never been a, a fan of Nicolas Cage because I've been on the uh, the the Movie Review Hour podcast mm-hmm. twice. <laughs> Once he came in and took over my radio show, and we had a long discussion about Con Air, or as I like to call it, uh, Forrest Gump Goes to Prison, <laughs> for a couple reasons. Because I don't know if you knew this, but I didn't know it until I rewatched it before we did the episode. Uh, Bubba is in Con Air. Oh. Is he really? He plays his that. friend on the plane that gets shot and falls into Nick Cage's arms <laughs> in a scene that I was just waiting for Nick Cage with the bad accent that he had to just go, look at him and go, Bubba, you got shot. Because <laughs> <laughs> Nicolas Cage had a, oh, had a gumpy accent for that film. So oh, that man. Was... Nick Cage, he's a uh, hit or miss, man. It... <laughs> he's... Uh, He's hit or miss or miss or miss. Yeah, is, is he it, brilliant I'm, or is he uh, a little over the top? I don't know. I Raising Arizona is about the only Nick Cage film I just absolutely adore. But that's just because I'm a Coen Brothers fan. I don't know if it's because it's Nick Cage. Yeah, I, I've I've seen a couple that that 
old Nick Cage was in that I mm-hmm. liked, but for the most part, nah, not a fan. But I do, I do enjoy the 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 Nicholas Cage movie review hour podcast because you get to find out how how bad other people think his movies are. <laughs> wow! I was and actually it, a stand-in on one of his movies that shot here last year. Oh, I, really? I didn't get to meet him, but uh, some of my friends did. It was interesting. So if you ever, you should put Inconceivable on your watch list. Okay. Well, did did you let Kyle review. know? I that, didn't. That, no. Oh, that should have been brought up. It should have. It should have been. Yeah. You you oh, have, you'll have to get a hold of him and I be will. a guest on his show. <laughs> that, <laughs> well, what is, I, want, I want to know what Nick Cage is like. Like when you meet him, is like because I kind I of know. like assume he would be like somebody's like divorced dad. Like when you meet him, like he's just kind of he's there, and you know. Mm-hmm. You've not seen him since like two Christmases ago, and <laughs> he's been on a business trip to Vegas supposedly. And when you meet him, you're like, "Hey!" And he's just like, "Hey, what's your name?" Uh, <laughs> Even when he's seen Nick you before, Cagey. it's kind yeah. of I like I, like imagine Nick Cage to feel and like look like, but I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I was going to ask you, but you said you didn't. I, meet I him, didn't so. meet him. No. No. Did you see him from afar? Did he no, see him I didn't. Way? So the interesting thing was he is one of the stars in the movie, but he was only on set for like three or four days. They filmed all of his stuff because he had to move on to another project. They just wanted his face on the box. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what it's all it's better about. Better than Don's face on the box. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put your face on my box. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to be that, in a movie. Yeah, that sounded really bad. Out of actually. context, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> at at the end of all my podcasts, I take a clip out of the show and I tag it at the end of my podcast, mm-hmm. like after you listen to the outro. Mm-hmm. It's going to say, I'm going to put your face on my box. Please, that's dude. Just <laughs> <laughs> send me that sound bite because that yeah. might just be my theme from now on. Yeah, oh yeah. that's going to be your little tag at the end of your. It, it'll be part of your logo for the. You know, <laughs> Big foot insert in mouth. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that. You never know which direction this show is going to go. Sometimes, <laughs> you sometimes your face end up on a box and you didn't even that's know. Right, man. You know, I guess it's better than a milk carton. That's yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> do they put faces on milk cartons anymore? I don't know. Do, do, do they people drink make, milk yeah. cart out of milk cartons? Do people anymore? drink milk cartons? Do they have school anymore? Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, they saw milk cartons at school. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They, well, they had the little ones. They didn't, yeah, the they didn't ones. put the they didn't put the faces of missing children on your school uh-huh. lunch milk carton. <laughs> I kind of wish they did. Move, you know? Yeah, because I mean, be- <laughs> but I would have used it as a disciplinary action. You know, I've been like, "You're acting up, man. <laughs> this kid acted up too. Yep. See him? This is Johnny. Yep. Johnny used to go here. <laughs> yeah, you have to suspend one up. You put their face on." the milk for right. all the rest of the school to see at lunch. <laughs> I, I think like our discipline problems would be month, over. You have like milk carton of the month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst student gets put on the milk carton oh, after man. getting suspended. That's, man, I would be on a lot of milk cartons. <laughs> a lot, lot more than I would movie, movie boxes, that's for sure. I, I know some Joe teachers who I think would like that. But. <laughs> What's that? Not if Joe was making the milk carton. That's true. That's be, true, yeah. You'd That's be true. A, You'd be on a box, not yeah. the milk carton. Yeah, I'd, be on, I'd be on the box that the milk cartons were in. That's it. That's <laughs> See, you've never seen any of my movies either. Then. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nobody has. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> although, although I will say Six Feet Below Hell, man, is that they just wrapped up a month on at Redbox. Right on. How'd they, that go? They, apparently good enough. They're not a month. Six months. They were on there six months. Six so, months. Yeah, wow. six months. That's awesome. Yeah. I, Did was, they release uh, it as a red box original? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, yep. I didn't I didn't hear how all the, how well that went. I don't think Brittany even told me about that. <laughs> I heard about it like <laughs> secondhand from somebody else. And I've worked with her multiple times. Brittany, if you're listening, I see how it is. <laughs> but we were friends. So you you didn't hear that it was out there or she didn't tell you I didn't about know being it was part out there, of it. No. I knew oh, she okay. was in in that, but oh, I didn't know it had got picked up by Redbox until just a few days ago. Somebody told oh yeah, me. Mm. back in back in uh, beginning of June. Yeah, yeah. I would have I, actually, I would have spent a dollar just to see it. I would Well, I believe you can you can actually buy the movie now. Really? Yeah. I will have since to. it's since it's no longer on Redbox. I don't know if I I'll, I would like it enough to buy it. I Oh, it's it. great. <laughs> it's great. You'd love it. <laughs> you Dom's will. Face you, is on yeah. The Dom's box. is Dom's face is on the box. My face is on I the want box. It for yeah. my collection. Yeah, Red Reggie. That's my character and that was Reggie. <laughs> my wife's so. going to wonder why this DVD is sitting up on a pedestal in my office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Dom's face yeah. is on the box. You don't yeah. understand. It'll be framed. 
There it is. There it is. <laughs> my wife's very concerned if she's listening right now. <laughs> she's afraid that's actually going to be on my yep. office table. At, <laughs> when she gets home. Yep, he's framing his face and putting his face on his box. That's just not right. Uh, <laughs> so where where do we go from here? I guess uh, we could hit a few news stories. If you guys mm-hmm. are, do, you guys got other things to talk about or? Oh, we can hit the news okay, stories. Okay. Uh, we, can hit, we can hit a few news stories. Buy now, some, some time. These, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got 20 minutes to kill. That's right. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, what, what should we cover here? Uh, comic actor uh, Sasha Baron Cohen has offered to pay fines for six Czech tourists who were reportedly detained by authorities in Kazakhstan's capital, Astana, for dressing up in his character as his character Borat. <laughs> uh, sporting lime lime green mankinis and black wigs the men had hoped to take a picture in front of the i love astana sign earlier this month but local police find them uh, some 68 dollars each for committing minor hooliganism according to local media in a facebook post on tuesday uh, sasha barra cohen said uh, to my check mates uh, who were arrested <laughs> who were arrested send me your details and proof that it was you and i'll pay your fine so Minor wow. hooliganism. Minor hooliganism. Is that, that is, like an actual charge? It should be. I, it, should. it is today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm calling my congressman. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this is over in the Czech Republic too. So it should be here. Yeah, it should be absolutely. <laughs> Minor hooliganism. Can you imagine how many times I'd get fined? I've been convicted of tomfoolery <laughs> and minor hooliganism. Yes, yes. Jocularity in the first degree. <laughs> Yeah, Second I think degree. that's what Louis C.K. Kitt- no, wait, that's different. <laughs> that's, not, that's not jocular. Oh, <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, we've uh, what do you say after that? What's that? <laughs> this this conversation's derailed. It's, it's, <laughs> welcome to the Life Radio Show. <laughs> you didn't listen to any of the former uh, episodes, did you? <laughs> I listened See, that's, to them. That's a tell right them. there. That's a tell. If, I, if you had listened, you would have known derailed is usually how we end up. <laughs> Most of the time, how we start. <laughs> Now, Sydney is actually, uh, she's not bragged on herself enough, but she's gotten some awards for uh, a short film she was in called Ellie, which has been traveling around. It's a horror film. It is, which is funny because I don't watch horror films ever because I don't like being scared. But yeah, I was very scared in the making of this film. Uh, It's about a college girl who uh, very intelligently agrees to be part of a (laughs) found footage project by her uh, film professor says we're gonna make we're gonna put cameras in your apartment and then we're gonna try to scare you to death but don't worry you're not gonna get hurt well uh things don't go as planned dun, dun, dun. they never do they, they never, never do. do yeah so that's pretty cool it's kind of a weird relationship to have with your professor too it, it is. Really is. Yeah, it, yeah that's a little creepy <laughs> like... well so the thing was uh i was just like a a really quiet student who was really good at school. And so he wanted someone who was quiet and unassuming for the role, but it was actually a role that was written for me. So that was pretty cool. I didn't wow. know that. Oh, yeah. You That's didn't. Yeah. I auditioned for a different project that the director was doing and I didn't fit for that role, but he really liked my audition. So he wrote that specifically for me. And in March, it's going to be part of a feature film. Cool. It's going to be the opening scene of his feature based on that initial story. That is really cool. Yeah. Really cool. So you're actually, uh, you don't, are you reprising your role? I am. Yeah, I'm reprising. So my name will go from Ellie to Kelly. I, I don't know why, but the K for kill. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to, it's called Final Cut and it'll be shooting in March. Cool. Not to be confused with Final Cut Pro. The right. Editing software. Yes. Exactly. Or the final cut with Robin Williams. It's the origin story <laughs> of Final Cut Pro. Yes. Yeah. It's how they invented it. Well, it is about film students, so. Yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah, That's what, that's all I could think of when I heard this title. But uh, I know Jeff's going to make something great yeah. out of that. Yeah, so my, my role has been likened to Drew Barrymore in Scream. So that's kind of to give you an idea of what my role is. Awesome. Are you allowed to talk anymore about that? I, I don't know. I don't you, think about so. About Drew Barrymore? <laughs> yeah, about Drew Barrymore. Okay. Like, She's blonde like, and uh, <laughs> She's she still around. this new show on. Yeah. yeah. Santa Clara to diet. What? I haven't heard about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like. Oh, I think I've heard of it. Yeah, it's on Netflix. kind of a zombie, but yeah. it's like a comedic 
She's a zombie. zombie. Like yeah. comedic, a like, comedic zombie? Yeah, like she, she craves human flesh, but she's still going about living her daily life. I haven't seen it. This is just what my sister told me. Oh, that okay. just sounds like what's going on with men in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, pretty close, pretty close. <laughs> they were inspired by the making of this series. Uh, I don't want to say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to derail again. <laughs> Back to milk cartons. <laughs> That's, that's that's never good to de- see. Yeah, now we're derailed by you. Usually, I'm the one derailing my own show. That's right. Which is what my business. If I, <laughs> if I want my own train wreck of a show to get derailed, that's that's up to me. Oh, Stop derailing I'm shows. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'll just back away from the mic slowly. <laughs> back away. Back away. No, you're okay. It's 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 just different being on this side of the train wreck. So. That's right. Yeah, you get to watch in. You can't look away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're right. You really can't. <laughs> uh, yeah, a whole lot of shenanigans going on in Hollywood. I'm actually thinking we were talking about acting resumes earlier, and I'm actually thinking about putting on mine, never molested anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. But what if they ask you for paperwork on that? <laughs> Where's your proof? Yeah, well, I guess that would be hard to prove. Yeah, it, it is. It, it would be very yeah. hard to prove. Yeah. That's uh, but the, well, the only problem is it seems like that would actually keep you from getting cast because that's what they all seem to go for. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, never molested anybody. It's like, well, I can't cast him there. Yeah, <laughs> you you aren't going to be a star. So. Indie films in the <laughs> Sorry Midwest about your for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stick stick with your indie films and your comedy shows, and, and uh, just yeah, if you want to be all keeping your hands to yourself like that, you're never going to make it anywhere. That's that's bad. We just probably just with that we probably convince somebody to do something they shouldn't just so they can try to get a movie role. We're gonna lose you viewers <laughs> today and listeners. Uh, yeah. We're so sorry. <laughs> ah, we don't. I don't have any. It's okay. <laughs> hey, Doug is listening. I that's know Doug's true, listening. That's true. Doug, Doug did say he was listening, or well, at least he asked a question about the show. So he I'm did. assuming that means he didn't he message me on part, break. Yeah. So <laughs> I see who he loves more. <laughs> <laughs> a, uh, oh wow! A federal appeals court has spiked an Ohio has spiked an Ohio couple's case against companies that distributed an erotic fiction book about a woman's desire for New England Patriot star Rob Gronkowski. The six the six <laughs> U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruling Tuesday upheld a lower court's dismissal of the case against Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, and Smashwords filed by a couple referred to as John and Jane Rowe. Uh, the couple says an engagement photo that shows them embracing was pulled from their photographer's website without their knowledge and used on the cover of a gr- <laughs> a gronking to remember. Oh. <laughs> the book was self-published oh. using the defendant's comp- defendant company's <laughs> online service by a male author writing under the su- pseudonym Lacey Noonan, according to court records. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh I, that's oh, the only reason i put that article in as the news is a <laughs> gronking to remember <laughs> oh man that uh brings the love of football to a new level it, it does it does it yeah. really does now i've never been a patriots fan and now i'm definitely not <laughs> <laughs> talk about a touchdown yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they're being sued because appa- apparently the uh, apparently this couple's wedding photo was taken offline and used as the book's cover. Oh my wow! Goodness. <laughs> Which I don't. That should be. I mean, I maybe he could take that as a compliment that he must look like Gronk. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to ask uh, my Patriots fan uh, friends. I don't have if any. If they've of those, read the book, so. <laughs> yeah, nobody should have Patriots fans as friends. That's right. Uh, Patriots fans shouldn't have Patriots fans as friends. Uh, if you're a Patriots fan and you live in Ohio, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a, you're a bandwagon fan. See, I was an Eagles fan back when they were, you know, not very good. And of course, I haven't been able to watch a game all season. What phenomenal this year! Until uh, Sunday night, it was the first time I got to watch an, an actual Eagles game, and they lost. So, <laughs> and you were really confused when you saw Donovan McNabb was not their quarterback anymore. That's true. I, mean, was, I was like, "Who's who this is guy? This? You know, that looks nothing like him. He doesn't have an afro. Yeah, <laughs> He's not nearly as tan as I remember. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> Don, have you been out of the sun? <laughs> like, who are you? 
Uh, a report of a car crashing into a pizza and ice cream shop on Long, on Long Island turned out to be a scene for a film starring Billy Crystal, who I didn't know was still making movies. <laughs> uh, police in Long Beach tell Newsday that officers and firefighters were dispatched Monday morning after someone reported a vehicle had crashed into slices and ices. Uh, <laughs> police department officials say they... They were aware that a movie was being filmed there, but had to be sure it was a real. Uh, it was not a real accident that occurred. An officer was posted at the location to direct motors around the scene, which may have led some to believe that there had been a crash. So, the police already knew that they were there filming that. They already knew they were filming a crash scene. They had an officer on site. Somebody called the police, and the uh, police showed up. Well, you, you just got to yeah, make sure. Yeah, we just got to make sure. <laughs> that's that Billy, that's Billy, that's Billy. <laughs> <laughs> they were wanting to go see stars. Yeah, I, I just, know. Man, I, I can't, I'm just, I can't wrap my head around the fact that Billy Crystal's still making movies. <laughs> that's where I'm, like, that's, stuck yeah, that's, on the that's story. That's bad that that's the takeaway you've got. <laughs> I thought he was only voice acting now. Where I got stuck is that I really want to go to a place called Slices and Ices. Like that Absolutely. sounds amazing. It sounds delicious. It's like lunchtime, getting hungry. I think we're heading there after ices. this, right? <laughs> yep. How long of a drive? Going is it? straight from here to slices and ices. <laughs> See, I just wonder if that, if that was actually the name of the the real pizza place, or if that I was what so. they called it in the uh, in the movie. <laughs> it just seems too clever for Hollywood. That's true. That's, it's <laughs> yeah. been like Pizza Boys or something. Yeah, <laughs> Pizza Guy. Yeah, the Pizza Guy. That's the Pizza all. Guy. <laughs> I ordered from the Pizza Guy. Yep. Yeah, we're uh, Deeds, Deeds Pizza. <laughs> uh, we got time for one more news story, and then we'll uh, we'll let you guys say have have the last word Ooh. here on the show. I got to decide what that's going to be. Yeah. Intense. Your face well, on a box. You, you got to pay attention to the news story first, and we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll, you, you're gonna we're gonna put you on the spot again. You're gonna have to decide quickly what you want the last word of the show to be. It's gonna be um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I read this one last. I read this one last time. We'll move on. Uh, at least I think I did. Well, well, we'll do it anyway. An Oregon woman whose inmate boyfriend died from a meth-laden kiss after a prison visit and was sentenced to to, to two years behind bars on Tuesday on a drug conspiracy charge. You're shaking your head. Did you hear? I this actually before? heard about this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Melissa Ann Blair and Anthony Powell shared a long kiss at the end of a visit last year at the Oregon State Ten State Penitentiary, and she passed seven tiny balloons filled with methamphetamine into his mouth. Uh, two two of the balloons ruptured in Powell's stomach a short time later, and he died of methamphetamine toxicity. Uh, U.S. District Judge Marco Hernandez said Blair's actions were part of a scheme devised by Powell to and others to get drugs inside the prison. There was a dispute as to whether Blair participated of her own free will, but Powell shared responsibility for his own death. So, <laughs> so let that be a lesson so to you. <laughs> the literal kiss of death. Yes, yeah. exactly. The kiss, kiss of, of meth. Death. As well. oh. The kiss of meth. Oh, man. That's painful. Yeah, well, what a way to go. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, on that note, we'll go ahead. Do you guys, uh, do you, what do you have coming up? We'll so, start um, with Joe. We'll get to you. What do you have oh, coming up? We'll start and, with Sydney. And, Sydney. Okay, we can start with, yeah, we can start what with Sydney. Coming, yeah. up? Uh, coming up, no, I have the Ellie is turning into Final Cut. That's coming up in March. I've had... Some auditions going on, so just fingers crossed that I get work. And now, it pays. now, do you have any social media sites you want to put out there? Any get get any Twitter followers? Um, I'm or? on Twitter at Sid Vortex, uh, and then Facebook. You can just find me, Sydney Volmer. So uh, I've got uh, obviously Ground Rules. The finale comes out next Wednesday, um, and I'm really excited for that. We've got our science fiction noir film that is coming out early next year. We've got a really great cast and crew. And uh, I've also, uh, The Windows Are Always Clean in Portland is going to make its Paris trip in March, which is really exciting because it's uh, my first big win at a festival and getting to go to a festival and represent my home city of Cincinnati. Cool. Uh, you know, against 76 other cities all over the world, mm -hmm. which is, that's really exciting. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Joseph Cox Official. And, um, it's official. Oh, it's official. Did you name it that? I did, did name it, it oh, that because okay, there okay. were multiple Joseph Coxes, and I had to act like I was important enough but, to be yeah, official. They, they, were not they, official. they haven't it's verified all me those yet, imposter, though. Oh. I all forgot those my imposter Instagram. coxes out there. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of imposter coxes. <laughs> 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 all kinds. Uh, all kinds. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but yeah just check out the rail right at the end of the show. Yeah. But yeah oh, I forgot my Instagram. Oh, That's yeah. it's Your really Instagram. simple. It's Volmer Sydney. Volmer Sydney. I'm not it's official. Backwards. Not official. I'm not okay. official. Okay. Not official. No. So you could be one of the imposters. I could be. Know. I could get for you some badges. Know. Some badges okay. will make. Well, you I'm going to have to see some pic- a photo ID or something on a milk curtain. I think I've got I've got my photo ID okay. here. You can see that. <laughs> <laughs> and of uh, Don, I I've got an opportunity for you. You want to join a pyramid scheme or something? Oh, but I'm all, sounds great. Yeah, I, I gave a bunch of money to Wiley, so I might as I'm just ready to throw. Uh, everything yeah, let's away. do it, man. Gonna, <laughs> so if you're listening, we're going to start a pyramid scheme, and this is satire. So, <laughs> <laughs> government, don't find me. Yes, yes, yes. Does it have anything to do with makeup and skincare? Because I feel like there are no, a lot just, of those already. You give me money, and your friends give you money. Oh, and that's all it is. Oh. We we actually Whoa, don't have a product. So simple. Oh, okay. It's so simple. How do I, I join? I thought we were going to join the cheer squad and do a human pyramid. You, oh you yeah, lost well, oh. yeah. I just want to rip everybody off now. Yeah, no. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I get on top of the pyramid, it's going. Crazy. No, I wrote an entire scene in a comedy film that hasn't been made yet that involves a guy just showing up in the middle of the night and he's <laughs> trying to sign this guy up for a pyramid scheme, and you think. Based on this guy's look, that he's going to be so furious about it, and he just—it's suddenly a quick cut, just cuts of him signing all the paperwork and be like, "Great deal." <laughs> I just—I don't know why. I just—I've been joking about pyramid schemes a lot lately, and it's—it's hey, it's not, not nearly as funny as it should be. <laughs> There's still several of them out there, so uh, yeah, support your local pyramid scheme. Uh, <laughs> well, Sydney Vollmer, uh, Joe Cox, thanks for coming in. It was thanks nice having you. you. Uh, you know, we derailed a couple times, but we managed to, managed to keep some of our dignity, uh, yeah, which, a little is, bit. which is rare. Hey, I never had shred. any to begin with, so it's okay. <laughs> so you're leaving with a little extra. Yeah, that's right. I gained some. Okay. I got a you surplus of dignity today. <laughs> All right. Well, the, we'll probably take care of that before you even leave the studio. All right. <laughs> I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to play a little Mr. Stone King right now, just because, uh, just because I feel like a Mr. Stone King and we will be back here shortly. Running, running, 
She's stupid in the street and she can't socialize Well, I love the little girl and I love her till the day she dies She wears Jessie's guitar sound, jealousy scream Fading at the light, you know what I mean Super creeps Hit me running Running scared Scary monsters Super creeps Hit me running Running scared To making music, videos, or podcasts? Are you a local comedic talent in need of some much needed publicity? Are you a behind the scenes professional interested in audio, video production, graphic design, and public relations? Eventide Entertainment is actively seeking talents, clients, and professionals to help our business grow into something truly special. And we want you to be one of those. For more information, go to facebook.com slash eventide entertainment or send us an email at eventideent at gmail.com. Oh, all right we're, we're back that is a hard crawl what's that you you heard it in the club oh yeah, yeah i was working nice. in the club and it's twisted my back somehow in the wrong much the worst possible fashion <laughs> and i went to my knees down on the uh, bathroom floor <laughs> that is not a place you want to be on your knees no it's not no it's not and i was alone too <laughs> that's a good thing <laughs> Uh, we're back on the Life Radio Show, in case you couldn't tell by the stupidity that's already flowing through your ears, uh, which is probably mostly in between them, because you're <laughs> listening to me. So, <laughs> uh, I'm sitting in here. Uh, Travis Charles has made it into the studio along with Joe Robinette, yeah. uh, two local comics, and that's all I got to say about that's it. it. Yep. <laughs> that is pretty Thanks much for it. Thanks tuning in. That is the most yep, positive thing in. you can say. Uh, see you next week. No. <laughs> I've been asked before we get started, I've been asked to throw this out there, so I threw it out. 
No, I've been asked to. Uh, apparently, they're they're giving there are free T-shirts available in the lower atrium if you tweet about the basketball game on Saturday. Uh, there will be more games and contests for students, such as uh, free uh, free throw. Man, so who wrote this? Free throw contest and minute to win it. Uh, chances also chances to get some uh, free rapid fire pizza. Uh, the game is 3 p.m. Uh, on Saturday. Men's basketball versus Kent State. So there it is. It's out there. I think no, they said they'd no, be there till 2 o'clock. Yeah, what's that? They're going to be out there till 2 o'clock giving the shirts away. Oh, is that what they yeah. said? Okay, well, there you go. They'll be out well, there until 2 o'clock giving free shirts away. So if you're shirtless, uh, quick, run yeah. this way. <laughs> if you're shirtless and you run past the studio window, I will give you the shirt that I'm wearing. Then I will be shirtless, and I will tweet about the basketball game and go get my own free shirt. <laughs> They're all one go. size fits most. Yes. The circle of life. <laughs> Yes, full of full of the life. Uh, so, welcome to the show, guys. Both of you have been on before, and somehow I've agreed to have you back in. Yeah, and you've I was agreed to get, come that. back in. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially with Joe. Last time I told him I didn't want to see him again. No. <laughs> mistakes are made. Yeah, mistakes were made. Well, Travis brought him in. I said, "Well, I guess." Maybe <laughs> <laughs> one of those weird things, like the Ben Affleck and Matt Damon thing. Like he just hates you, but I sneak you in everywhere we go. <laughs> Uh, is, is that what you're doing? Well, no. I well, know. I noticed Joe was your backup because you tried to get John in. Yeah, he's yeah. he's working today. So how's it feel? <laughs> nice. Yep, Joe Playing is just second the backup. fiddle to a homeless guy. Yep, you you are. <laughs> I'm not going to call you Joe Robinette anymore. You're now on your backup, John Morris. <laughs> oh, Joe's <laughs> always. Wish, I wish I had the voice. You're John Morris's understudy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> See, I wanted John because John does have a voice, but Joe's always the guy that I go to to like go to any show. Or like to get on a show if I'm doing it, but I'm like I don't even start like asking a few other people every now and then. That's so why I tried John and he couldn't make it, so Joe's yeah. still here. All right, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. It's always good to see. Uh, <clears throat> always good to see Joe. So I was I was talking about somebody I graduated high school with, and we actually went to the same high school. That was all kinds of talent comes out of ago. that school. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm not sure where it went. But. So much they tore it down. <laughs> Did they really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they did, and uh, now the I, city I, has no school. They just tore it down. Yeah, just a bunch like of we, dumb yeah, kids. Yep, of, from now on, it's just all a bunch of farm kids out there. Nice. They don't mm-hmm. even, yeah, <laughs> they don't even have a school up there in Milton anymore. So they did they? tear it down though, and that it just cracked me up how many people were on there talking about how sad they were. Oh, they were yeah. tearing, tearing down yeah. the high school. It's like, are you kidding me? They wanted to keep Give me the a building. sledgehammer. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to tear it down when I was going there. Maybe most kids just didn't, don't make it past middle school there, so they're like, why even have it? Yeah, that's and that's, it was an that's old true. asbestos filled building, and they yeah. wanted to save it and do something else with it. And it's like, what do you want to do with it? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think they had any. They hadn't thought that far into well, it. Well, the old high school before that was uh, is now a, an old folks' home. right? McKinley yeah, Commons, McKinley I think Commons. it was. Yeah. yeah, that's what you need—an asbestos-filled old folks' home. Yeah, yeah. well, they're well, on they their way out one. anyway. They could at least upgrade it to the new, the the other high school instead of tearing it down. <laughs> they become apartments. Yeah, because well, that that's what had happened is they needed that new high school built. You know, back in the eighties, because McKinley Commons, they said, "Well, it's just we just can't house students. We just can't have students in here anymore." So they gave it to the old folks. <laughs> See, that reminds, like, it reminds me. Um, in in Virginia, I was doing cable work in this apartment building that used to be in uh, an old insane asylum back in the early nineteen hundreds in Richmond, and they didn't change any of the corridors or the door. All the doors have the room numbers still on them, like for like some weird aesthetics. Yep, scratches on the. Inside so like when you're walking down the hallways, you're like you're going in the basement. All you can imagine is like, what happened in that room? You know, like we used to go in, in that, like back in like 1910, like, you know, some crazy stuff oh, yeah. happened in that hospital and the people who lived there didn't know what it was because they were all newly into Richmond and they're all like college kids and stuff. And I was like, yeah, imagine this room, probably the electroshock therapy room. They go, <laughs> shut up, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. We had so no then, idea. Yeah, then they all just thought it was haunted after that. And it probably was. It probably it is. Been. Yeah. It's still creepy to walk through there. Is it, where, where is this? Aunt? Richmond, Virginia. I check of, it out yeah. sometime. Most of Virginia is pretty creepy to yeah. go well, through, yeah, that's actually. True. That's true. I, I mean, the Civil War and all that stuff yeah, happened right through there. So. sit still very long there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't drop the soap either in Virginia. That's Anywhere. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> especially there. And bus stops. See, if I'd have thrown my back out yeah, and gone down on my knees in Virginia, dropping. I'd yep. have been in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Someone would have just fixed it right up for you. Yeah. <laughs> How's your back now, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't hurt as bad. Yeah. Oh, anyway, 
Uh, so what do you guys got going on? What do you got going on lately, Travis? You got any shows coming up? Yeah, uh... Morris and I are driving uh, 210 miles tomorrow to do a show. I think it's pronounced Catawba Island, going towards Cleveland. Wow. No, to, like near Toledo. Something weird. I don't know. It's some like resort town, um, Port Clinton or something. Oh, okay. I know where Port Clinton is. But it's like on a little tiny strip and there's water. Because there was actually, I was reading in the newspaper the other day, there was part of the, part of the road actually fell in. There was a sinkhole that kind of. Mm, watch out for that. Are we going to be able to get there now? There. Is it, cause it's Port Clinton is right up by Marblehead. Okay. And there's a road to Marblehead that actually collapsed. So yeah, be careful up there. <laughs> yeah. And it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to snow. Now they heard you were coming. They rolled the road. <laughs> get get, nope, get it out of here. <laughs> we can't have it. <laughs> and then um, on Saturday, Joe and I are going to some part of Indiana. Yeah, where are we going? Uh, I just have Indy in question mark. Park, Parkersburg? No. Hartford yeah, City. Did. Hartford so it's, City, Indiana. It's good to know what shows you're going to. Dude, if I didn't get tagged and stuff on Facebook, I wouldn't make half the shows I'm on. <laughs> I'm like, I guess I got a show tomorrow, and like I'll just go to it, and there I am. Uh-huh. No, but I think it's me, Joe, and just, it's just a three-man show in Indiana, I believe. Um, I think Jim Jam's coming. They gave him 15 minutes, which... Jim James? Oh, James Market. We call him Jim Jam. Jim Jam. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. See, I, 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 haven't been, I haven't been out that much, so I don't, I don't know all these cutesy little pet names you have <laughs> for, all, for all your friends, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the only one who's got a nickname, There's really. Jim James, Joe John, or John Joe, sorry. John Joe. Are you Don Juan? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time somebody's made that terrible mistake oh so what you got going on joe other All than kinds going of stuff. To, other than going to uh yeah somewhere in indiana, BF, Saturday, indiana. <laughs> provided i make it out of that yeah. <laughs> with the nick cage movie review tomorrow at wiley's i think they're reviewing face off face off yeah you know, uh, you're doing podcast uh, you're doing a set beforehand right i'm doing a show? set and joe young is on the podcast and i okay. guess adrian cosby's on the show also oh is he yeah well, that'll be fun that'll be yeah, a big show face off is just that's like double terrible because you don't just have nick cage yeah we were just travolta talking too. about that travolta i don't know that i've seen it though i don't think i have you could you probably haven't missed anything yeah it's basically it's john travolta trying to be uh uh nick cage while nick cage Ooh. is trying to be john travolta so it's it's like it's like a, a weird mathematical equation of terrible. It's, it's like a quadratic a equation, no, equation of really not bad. Not a comedy at all. Huh. No. <laughs> well, it depends on how you look at it. Not an intentional comedy. Right, right, Spoiler right. alert, they re- they exchange faces. Yes, yes. <laughs> they become each other. And, and voices, which is yeah. weird. <laughs> but you think they debated between voice off and face off in the title? Oh, I mean, yeah. They really didn't work very hard yeah, face naming off, the movie. Over. <laughs> be soft voiceover <laughs> although I, you know what i got a feeling travolta might be in trouble coming up really because that movie is there where he's john Gotti that's going to come out they just uh-huh. halted releasing it like they stopped it and everyone's thinking that it's because something or someone in the movie is going to be getting alleged uh more groping more groping and yeah. you know Take well, him. yeah, yeah, I could see that being Travolta. You know, yeah, oh, I told him right earlier. Some young boys or something. Like, like I always thought John Travolta, whenever I heard anything in Hollywood having to do with that stuff, I was like, John Travolta seems like the kind of guy that would do that. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know like, why, but. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so hopefully that's not the case because the movie previews actually looked good for a John Travolta movie. I don't know. I really can't buy him as gaudy. He didn't. It looked all right in the previews. Yeah, I, I've I've had a tr- I've had trouble buying Travolta as a tough guy ever since yeah. he started making kind of tough guy. Yeah, movies. Pulp what Fiction was, was the beginning and the end of that for me. Yeah, yeah, Pulp. Yeah, he wasn't bad in Pulp Fiction, but he he right. I didn't see him as the tough guy in it. He you know he was with Samuel L. Jackson, who I saw as the you know yeah yeah he played that movie Michael where he was an angel, right? Yeah, I I believe so. Yeah, Is that prior to. Pulp Fiction or after? No, that was after. Pulp Fiction kind of kickstarted him again. He, okay. yeah. It was like, look who's talking for was probably the best <laughs> thing he had going Ugh. before Pulp Fiction. Isn't it amazing how much you wind up knowing about a person once you start talking about them? Yeah. Like, you know, what movies and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes owns, like, terrible. three airplanes, yeah. three or four airplanes. Yeah, dude, he's a pilot. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Flying all the kids in. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, maybe, well, maybe that's maybe he crashed his plane. That's why they halted the release of that. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But that's what I've seen. On, that's what I've seen on the internet so far. Is like, is John Travolta the next one? I'm like, it's like Actually, American Idol. I like, called Charlie Rose about two or three days before it came out. I just happened to say to my wife, "It's like, you know, Charlie's done some stuff because he gets <laughs> he gets googly eyed and starts blushing on air when one of the girls say something to him. He just seemed like a creepy guy and. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, it comes out after I say it. Well, good job. You called it. Who's next? Because um, so, there's so many. I'm honestly, probably Paul McCartney, I think. I really think like Pat Sajak or like Alex Trebek for some reason. Like Alex. Yeah, I, I can see, see Alex. I did a joke about Alex Trebek. And I'm like, you know what? I could totally see him being like that weird dude. Because like that's the only thing he's ever done is that show. So his rest of his life is pretty much private. You don't know a whole lot about Alex Trebek. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Joe does. Yeah. He's where the charges are going to originate from. Yep. Yep. 1987. <laughs> yep. Alex Trebek. I, yeah, I can see that. I keep waiting for Dr. Phil. I, oh, he, that would be the best. He's got to get busted for something. Him and I Oprah have like a weird like, child Dr. sex Phil. ring together. <laughs> they just both come down. <laughs> yeah, I told yeah, you it, not to tell nobody. Yeah. Yeah. You don't take Let's me down, do Oprah. I'll take you down with me. And then all of a sudden, Phil Donahue's like, he's the ringleader. <laughs> <laughs> That's a name I haven't heard in forever. <laughs> no one who's listening to this is like, who's Phil Donahue? Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. And, the and, and, and that's, that's going to just open up this vacuum for some kind now, of Now, if Jerry Springer doesn't get in trouble for Springer's nothing. Springer's coming back in. I think Springer's got to have done something. Oh, Springer's already been busted for some stuff. But really? That was a long time ago. He did ago. it yeah, the he, way you're he, supposed he, to. He went to a prostitute oh, yeah, and wrote yeah, a check. Yeah, he went to a prostitute and wrote a check. Weird. That was when he was nice. mayor of Cincinnati. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you didn't know that? He did it. No, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That was back, that was back in the 80s. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah, late yeah. 70s, early 80s. Well, where there's yeah. smoke. <laughs> that was before his show. He was mayor of Cincinnati at the time, and he... Didn't hurt his career one. It helped his. No, no, it did not. Yeah. It, and nowadays, that's like not a big deal. That's like, well, all right. Yeah. At least they were yeah. both consenting. I mean, as long, <laughs> yeah, as, exactly. as, long as, as long as the check didn't bounce, I don't see what the problem with the yeah. story is. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably how he got busted. The check bounced, and she came back. <laughs> yeah. Would, now, wouldn't it be no? Not funny. I guess it would be funny if like Corey Feldman has kids come up after him, since he's the one who kind of started this whole process <laughs> again. That's that's one thing about about the Corey Feldman situation. I it, I read the other day, it's been a while back that he actually his cases he because he had the one case he kept right. coming up, and I heard that was dismissed because of a statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. And that's the only time I've heard that in any of these. Because I mean, there's people after Bill Cosby from forty years ago. Yeah, where's the statute of limitations there? They have they they <laughs> they claim to have one in the uh, Corey Feldman case. I think it's just because they don't want to spend that much time investigating him. <laughs> they don't want to spend time around him. Yeah, I have gives, no doubt he, that. He keeps though, giving us albums, so we if, don't want that crap. <laughs> yeah, and if Corey Feldman could have a career again, I have no, no. doubt that he would let Charlie Sheen have sex with him again. I just again, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like some of it with him is like he wants to be in the spotlight. Like he says all these. Big people in Hollywood, all these secrets about Major them. Major players. Yeah, you yeah. got to wait till I do my special or write my book to find out who they are. And it's like, mm. Oh, it's a sales uh, tactic. There you go. Yeah, Keeping us all on the edge of our seats, Corey. <laughs> people care about you. Follow you me on Twitter and I'll release Look. the names at 3 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Uh Anyway. I love it. So, yeah, I got the Nick Cage thing going on tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's a... <laughs> Nick, nothing's come out about Nick Cage doing these things. That's uh, Are we surprised by that or just, no. just don't care? He probably <laughs> masturbates in front of a mirror. I don't see him projecting it onto other people. Like, I Did you say ejecting? <laughs> Would he have a leak? Pun intended. To a blow-up doll company, have one made in his likeness? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He has a Nick Cage tattoo on his He's got his one thigh. from every character he's ever played <laughs> in his house. Like, he's like, uh, come on, Ty. Raising Arizona. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> like a closet full of them. <laughs> he can only get off to Francis Ford Coppola movies. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we do a news so that, story? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how how much further down this rabbit hole can we go? 
I'm just proud of myself for keeping it clean. Yeah, good job, good job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised nothing's come out about you. Actually, but you know what? If you were if you were famous, if somebody knew who you were, <laughs> it wouldn't be nothing like creepy. I don't know what would come. I out feel of like day. I've been way too tame over the years. Like I could have gotten away with a lot <laughs> yeah, more. Before exactly. Now. It Absolutely. would have furthered your career. Well, I mean, yeah, probably something. You need at least be on the news or yeah. a couple more notches <laughs> in something. Notches, notches, nachos. Sorry. Oh, it's hungry. <laughs> I ain't ate today. Uh, normally, it's the kids who freak out at the sight of Santa Claus, but last week it was an adult who had a tantrum. Uh, Pastor David Grisham, a self-described Christian evangelist, taunted children and their parents who were waiting for a meeting with Chris Kringle at the Santa Claus house in North, North Pole, Alaska. <laughs> Grisham announced, I wanted, I wanted to tell you kids today that Santa Claus doesn't exist. Santa Claus is not real. The man you're going to meet today is wearing a suit like a costume, and it's make believe. It's awesome. not real. So, Pastor Grisham <laughs> ruined Christmas for all yeah. the kids of North Pole, Alaska. Which, if you live in a place called North Pole, Alaska, and you don't believe in Santa Claus, yeah. you're wrong right off the bat. Yeah, one of the smarter kids did pipe up and tell him neither is Jesus. Yeah. So <laughs> he kind of got him back a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, I think as a parent, I'd probably just start beating that dude in public. Yeah. Just let loose on him. You know, yeah, that's, it's not that's, his, that's not his job to ruin all those. Where, yeah. Where were the parents at? Yeah. But I know like, it's a weird thing, tradition to be, to do though. I mean, we we said we weren't going to do it with my daughter. Cause like my son was crushed when we told him the, the truth. Can we talk about that on the radio or we would get attacked for talking about the claws? <laughs> it's the claws I, I guess, claws. I guess I mean, we can. Tim Allen's a real guy. <laughs> you know, cause I remember when we told my son about it, and I just figured he assumed when I told him about Santa Claus, like the Easter Bunny and Tooth Fairy would like fall in line. And I'm like, did you really think a rabbit like the Easter Bunny could visit all these children? And he looks at us and he's like, what about the Easter Bunny? And it's like, oh, man, I've got to tell him on each you character. Des- you destroyed it all. <laughs> yeah. And he was 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, see, like, as a kid, I remember just finding out. Like, my parents never told me. Yeah. I just kind of, oh, that's how it works. But I still kept my mouth shut because I wanted stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> you wanted to pretend. My parents did the whole thing. It. Once Here's you stop thing, believing, though, you stop receiving stuff. When you let the kids believe Santa's getting all this crap, then you don't get any credit for buying it. See, my parents yeah. did it two ways. My parents would buy a ton of presents and wrap them. Right. Santa would leave things oh, that were yeah. unwrapped. Yeah. So... They got oh, this Santa joke. didn't bring wrapped presents. No, it was like all these. Uh, we give them all these lazy toys. Santa. Santa. Yeah, we did the same oh, thing. No, but the Santa, elves, at least the elves were lazy. Yeah, yeah. He the doesn't have, have time to do the wrapping. He's I mean, like my, delivering. You know, my wife. I still call her my wife. I guess. Um, <laughs> you can call her whatever you want, as long as we can broadcast. Her family <laughs> doesn't put anything under the tree prior to Christmas Eve, and then Christmas morning, then everything's just there. Like my, as I, when I grew up, we had presents under the tree for like yeah. two weeks prior to Christmas. Yeah. And then on Christmas yeah. Eve, it was a whole nother pile of crap on yeah. top of that. I'm very good at taking tape off wrapping paper. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of patience yep. and desire. Razor and, blade. Razor yep. blade works. You know, one of those little straight razors. You can get you get that tape right off of there. Yep. I've heard. So <laughs> I'm a, I, mean, I, I like the idea of Santa because, like, my kids get excited. And you can use it as a tool to, hey, yeah, that's true. go do something or else Santa's not going to yeah. bring any gifts. And they, what? And they freak oh, out. Oh, that's the threat you made? Yeah. I always thought it was Santa's going to come right <laughs> kick my <laughs> Yeah. Santa's going to take Santa's you gonna, yep, and Santa. make you into a new elf. Yep. Although yeah, some kids where might, do you think those elves come from? They might like that idea in one of those. Well, they are kid, I mean, all yeah. they are kids that say, and he then he beats you relentlessly. But here's the thing with Santa you said in Jesus like <laughs> Santa has <laughs> this done is always a good statement. Santa has done off, more for me in my Santa life. And Jesus. That's my favorite cop show too from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I want I want to do a whole joke about how Santa Claus has given me more in my lifetime than Jesus ever has. Like, you know, I can tell you what Santa has given me. I can't tell you anything Jesus has given me. You know, I don't know if that's people right now writing complaints to the radio station. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we lost another yeah. listener. Thanks a lot, yeah. Travis. The GM of the studio station just walked by and man, he's eyeing me. This is These are not Don's beliefs. Most mostly because he just found out listening to the show that Santa is Santa's real. not real. <laughs> you can't tell me two fairy ain't real, man. I've been getting fifty cent pieces for years. 
<laughs> 50 cents. That's all your teeth are worth. Uh, my days are like five. I used off. to get five dollar bills. You used to get five dollar bills. Yep. If I got five dollar bills for a tooth as a kid, I'd knock them out myself. Dude, yeah. I'd knock other kids' teeth out and tell them they were mine. Then uh, he would give us a bunch of the Ike dollars, the the big Ike dollars. So you wake up one, you have like five to ten Ike dollars under your pillow. Wow. Yep. But now Man, I can't afford to. If your tooth fairy had more money than mine, which can only apparently. be spent at IKEA's. <laughs> <laughs> they stopped making those in the seventies. <laughs> All right, we we got one more news story, and then we're going to have to take a break. So let me uh, let me cue up a song before we start the next news story, which uh, I guess I, I'll be playing some uh, some Potter. You're doing an intro song for the news story. That's what that's what I should do. I should start doing an intro song to the news story. Just, just for this one, for this one time, but I didn't prepare ahead of time, Joe. I'm sorry. You seem very disappointed. He's yeah. always placed yeah. in the block. <laughs> yeah, all an the angel. excitement you had for being here, <laughs> you know, all the is just gone. energy is just you. I yeah. I want to see because you were so energetic before you were bouncing. I was. Around. Yeah. I want to see Joe full of caffeine. <laughs> this is Joe full it's about of caffeine. The same. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, the the host Buffalo Bills didn't come back from a twenty three to three loss against the New England Patriots on Sunday, but a dildo did. A little more than a year after a fan threw a dildo onto the field in the Bills home game against the Patriots, an object that appeared to be another sex toy landed on the gridiron. A sideline crew member eventually swept it away with a down marker. Uh, last year, Patriots quarterback Tom Brady actually commented on the flying phallus because apparently this is a continual thing at Bill's Patriots games. Uh, Tom Brady actually commented, I thought it was uh, funny the ref didn't want to pick it up. He he was kicking it. Nobody wanted to reach down and grab it. That was very unusual, said Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> this was a first, he said, only in Buffalo. Well, apparently only in Buffalo again, Tom. <laughs> Tom Brady was not the only dildo on the field on Sunday. <laughs> and apparently has no problem picking them up without... Well, yeah, he any was, knowledge he was of their surprised. history. Yeah, surprised, he surprised that no one that else wanted, wanted to. to reach down and grab it. You yeah. guys don't want it? Yeah, well, I'll like, take it then. <laughs> another one for me. <laughs> and again, he probably paints, you know, puts his picture on there. He puts something. one of those little uh, football helmets out of a gumball machine <laughs> on, the, on the tip of it. <laughs> <laughs> In like twelve more years, I have a full set. Yeah. <laughs> the entire Patriots team right there, but the dildos. <laughs> I can beat this uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that isn't even right. That's funny as hell, but it isn't even right. <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> yeah. uh, Where do you find this crap? I had just long hours of searching. Don't no, just like talking like football game. Yep. Dildo. Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. And yeah. there it is. Tom Brady. Who that just figured? proves you can Google anything and it will exist. <laughs> Yep, Google makes it real. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> that should be their logo. Yep, that's what I was going to say. I think that's their logo. Google makes it real. If you can Google it, it's there. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's how I found out Santa wasn't real. Let's Google Santa dildo. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, uh, here's, uh, here's a little Potter's Field. We'll be back in a few minutes.
The weekdays are made for working, but the weekends, those are made for gaming. Join Ellison Smith every Saturday for a new episode of Saltwater Gaming as he breaks down video games of all different genres, consoles, platforms, and eras. Get a bit of the old and a bit of the new, a bit of the action and a bit of the mystery. Get it all every Saturday on Saltwater Gaming, brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. All right, we are back on the Life Radio Show. I'm your host, Don Smith, sitting in with Travis Charles and Joe Robinette, or uh, backup John Morris. <laughs> I don't like that. No, I don't blame you. That's don't give us something different. Nothing against John. Okay. There can only be one John, though. That's true. That's true. There's I don't no, have the, there is no substitute. You don't have that raspy I've been smoking right. for 50 yeah. years at 30 years old. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what are you guys doing over there? And I don't do Molly, so. <laughs> oh, well, that's. I noticed there was a difference. <laughs> I think that's what the kids call it. Now, did you say uh, the, before you went off on the John Travolta tangent, did you say you had some shows coming up that you wanted to plug? Yeah, I've got more. I mentioned the. Uh, the Nick Cage movie review or podcast tomorrow, and then Friday at Wiley's, I'm there with Nate Washington and Jesse Nutt. And who else? Mike Wells and Carlin Haggerty, I think, is hosting. Cool. Yeah, and I think Saturday we're off to somewhere in Indy. Somewhere in Indy, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's the actual name of it. Yeah, that's it. And what do <laughs> we got? You are somewhere in Indy. Saturday the 16th, I think we're both at uh, Yellow. Oh, we're doing Spirited Goat. Yep. Yeah. Spirited oh, okay. Goat and yeah. Yellow Springs. Or the Yellow Goat and Spirited Springs. Yeah, either way. Either way. If they're yeah. in Yellow Springs, it's probably either it's the same way to place. Live. Yeah. Unless Dave Chappelle's walking his tiger that day and then everything's closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he walked his tiger through Yellow Springs. I just assumed I didn't. I didn't know they closed anything for that. I assume they... You know, just brought more people in. <laughs> Tiger's got Tiger got to eat. Tiger's got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, like I, like I said, we'll we'll keep going with the news story since we just had one about a, a dildo on a football field. Uh, here's a, <laughs> a statue of Jesus Christ on display at the uh, at a cathedral in Spain has been hiding a secret message for hundreds of years in the most unlikely place. It was tucked away in a hidden compartment in the statue's rear end. <laughs> so yeah, there's. <laughs> Uh, although it is, it is usual for many sculptures to be, for many sculptures to be hollow, it's not so much usual to find handwritten documents inside. According to historian Efron Arroyo, a member of the Holy Week Brotherhood and of Satoyo de la Ribera, uh, the statue called Cristo de la Miserere, something like that. Cristo. Yeah. Cristo. Uh, has had been removed from the church in northern Spain for restoration when workers noticed a hidden compartment beneath a cloth that covered the statue's butt. Uh, inside the statue was a letter penned in 1777 by Joaquin Minguez, who was a chaplain at the Cathedral of uh, uh, Burgo de Usma. Uh, Minguez's letter discussed the statue and, and others created by the same sculptor and detailed uh, what life was like in the community 240 years ago. So a 240-year-old <laughs> message... And Jesus's butt, Which, <laughs> <laughs> like the guy who found it. Like one day, someone would check Jesus's butt. Yes. What? What, <laughs> what was the thought process that led? Like him during to the look restoration, there. like I want the butt. Yep. Like, lift up the cross. Lift that. Lift yeah. up that cloth. Like <laughs> I want to see a picture of the statue. Say, like, was there like a hinge? You know, where you know, did That's it kind of, yeah, look like, like something pushed right. on a cheek right. and a little part opens? Yeah. But I think it might have been in a crevice. Yeah. It was, <laughs> It was, it was rolled up. Just yeah. went, rolled up and wedged in there. Yeah. What is that? He's got yeah. toilet paper stuck in yeah. there. <laughs> I don't know. Pull on it. <laughs> See if you can get it out of there. That's, I mean, that's what I would have thought. Message. <laughs> it's fascinating, though. Fascinating. Yeah. How detailed not, was yeah. the statue? Uh, yeah, that would be. Because <laughs> normally he has a robe on in the statue. He's right. Like, just you naked. could just Barbie doll yeah. him. Well, he the... said it was a piece of cloth, so. Been like a like a loincloth, I guess. He was like barbarian Jesus at the time, you know. Conan. Conan Conan yeah. the Conan the Savior. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you remember like man. a message was like in his hand, you know, or like in his mouth, like he spoke it. Nope. It's in his butt. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> nobody like, will ever look there. One of the artists had the idea like one day they'll find this and it'll be hilarious. Yeah. Or he's just like, ah, just shoved it in. And- was the message from the sculptor, or was it just from somebody 
it said, it did not say if he was the sculptor or not. It said uh, he was uh, Just, jo- Joaquin Menges. He said he was a chaplain. Hmm. Didn't say he was a sculptor. He said he said that it that he discussed uh, the statue in the, in the, uh, in the paper, he discussed the statue where the paper was. I have inserted. had a long relationship huh. yes. with this statue. Yeah. Yeah. Appar- yeah. Apparently. And he discussed the sculptor yeah. and other statues created by the same sculptor. So if they dig a little deeper, they might be able to clone Juan Mingez or whatever. <laughs> they his should name find was. the rest of those statues and see what other messages are hiding. Exactly. Cause apparently that's a big thing with it's like that, a national with treasure movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that. Well, that was another one of uh, Cage's. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. The National Treasure. That, I f- think. Yeah, this is like National Treasure Four. <laughs> Plot uh, twist. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Message in a bottle, everybody. <laughs> yep, that's gonna be the subtitle for it. It's gonna <laughs> gonna be National Treasure Four. Message in a bottle. That's it. <laughs> They'll redo the police song. The stuff like that that comes out into like yeah. into the world. <laughs> <laughs> message in a butthole. <laughs> oh, yep, that was <laughs> crappy penmanship. <laughs> yeah, what's oh. this written in? Yeah, <laughs> Sanskrit. Uh. <laughs> Okay, the Texas prison system. Hey, right? To- <laughs> All right. Suitcasing. The Texas prison system has a head-scratching list of banned and permitted reading material for the 150,000 inmates uh, that bars apparently bans uh, Alice Walker's Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, uh, The Color Purple, but allows uh, several books extolling principles of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh <laughs> A, a Shakespeare, a collection of Shakespeare sonic sonnets because it contains nude images. A sonnet? Okay, I thought that was just words. This is a really weird article. Uh, Mon- Monty Python's The Big Red Book is banned. Uh, Where's Waldo is banned. Uh, the <laughs> the economic theory book uh, Freakonomics uh, apparently may cause offender disruption, so it's banned. And ten thousand other books that aren't allowed. Uh, however. Uh, out of 250,000 titles that are permitted by the prison system is uh, Adolf Hitler's uh, Mein Kampf and uh, two books written by uh, uh, former Grand Wizard uh, David Duke. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, those those are perfectly acceptable in the, this Texas prison system, but uh, not Shakespeare. We can't have that. Uh, the logic can be confusing. Some books are banned by the Texas Department of Criminal Justice because officials fear heavy-duty bindings could be used to call to uh, hide contraband. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, contents that describe how to make drugs, guns, or explosives, or how to escape detection for criminal activity are also a no-go. Uh, nud- nudity and sexual images are also banned, uh, which makes graphic no- novels like The Walking Dead prohibited. I didn't know there's a whole lot of nudity in The Walking Dead. I didn't want to see a lot of naked zombies. Don't really, you know, have things hanging down that shouldn't be hanging down there. Uh, uh, atlases are also banned because they could be used to plan an escape. <laughs> so mm. that is the list. That is the list of uh, some of the book banned books from. Uh, I think more more shocking than the banned ones are some of the allowed ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mine is Texas. a pretty big book. <laughs> What's that? Mein Kampf's a pretty big book, I would think. Uh, I don't have that much experience with it. <laughs> you got some stomach. Can I get Mein Kampf? Uh, some yeah. David Duke. <laughs> uh, yeah. And where's Waldo? No, yeah. where's Waldo? Oh, man. No, Waldo. <laughs> he just looking around in the jail cell for a guy in red stripes. Like, there he is. Yeah, found him. Shanked him. So what are, you, <laughs> what are you trying to learn with these books? Trying to learn how to round up people. Yeah. That's, oh <laughs> uh, yep yeah, that's that's not good <laughs> like that seems so stupid like those groups are still in jail yeah like yeah. nazis and like kkk members so like you can give them their reading material like here you go guys here's, right. your, here's your bibles basically yeah. yeah you know but you can't seek and find a cartoon yeah, yeah. character <laughs> yeah like, yeah i'd like to know the reasoning behind waldo uh, apparently, uh, the, con- con- st- the book contains stickers and they take the want- stickers out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be my thought. It's like, you know, but you guys can't have coloring books. Yeah. Yep. No coloring books, no stickers, mm, no just- gold star for you today. Maybe Pedro. just drove. Don't go to prison if you want to find Waldo. Exactly. <laughs> You're not going to find him just, there. Yeah. In Texas anyway. 
Yep. You're, <laughs> so we know Waldo is not in the Texas prison system. That's a, that's a start. We'll try to find him later on. Uh, when a South Carolina man got hit with a strong, uh, strong craving for Waffle House at 3 a.m. on Thursday, he wasn't going to let anything stop him, including an employee he says was asleep when he got there. Oh, like yeah, like this story. <laughs> uh, Alex, Alex Bowen told WIS TV that he walked over to the West Columbia restaurant uh, because he couldn't sleep. After seeing no other workers on the premises and apparently not wanting to disturb the napping person, uh, Bowen decided to take matters into his own hands. He headed back to the kitchen and whipped up a late night snack for himself, documenting his culinary adventure in a Facebook post that's since gone viral. So he's cooking for himself drunk at Waffle House at 3 a.m. How do I know he was drunk? Nobody goes to Waffle House at 3 a.m. sober unless they're the designated driver. I have. Uh, I have. Sober? <laughs> yeah. Sober? Yeah. I Never. don't drink much, but I get hungry all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. If it's Waffle House or Steak and Shake. Me and my wife woke up the kids one morning at like 2 a.m. We're like, we're going to Waffle House. Neither one of us drink or do drugs. We were just hungry for, for Waffle House. And it was one like right street from our house. At 2 a.m. So we get the kids up out of bed and go to Waffle House and get them waffles. And This wasn't on a school night, was it? No, they weren't in school yet. Okay, okay. Yeah. One That's was a baby. Then. One was a baby. The other, the other one was like one was three. 16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if he's done with school at 16. <laughs> but I wonder what he would have done if like other like customers would have came in the door. Would he just kept cooking? I guess. He'd have just gone ahead and cooked for them, too. Yeah, it's like a crappier version of Catch Me If You Can. <laughs> it's like, this man assumed a job at Waffle House for five years without anyone noticing. <laughs> they, they, he never got paid. Yeah. yeah. He just kept cooking. Just kept coming in. The other guy just never woke up either. He just slept the whole time. Yeah, he wasn't really sleeping. He's dead. Someone yeah, killed him. Dead. So, <laughs> this guy was a, napping in a pool of ketchup. I don't... <laughs> It's weird. I th- yeah, I thought it was a strange place to take a nap, but apparently he likes the smell of ketchup when he wakes but up. But, like, were there no other employees there? Waffle House usually have at least three. Yeah. I would think, yeah. So one dude sleeping, the other two outside smoking. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what Long happened. enough for the guy to cook and probably eat his food. Yeah. Did he yeah. pay well, for it? depends it. on what they were smoking. Around here, I mean, we have fancy Waffle House with fancy. You know, three people working. <laughs> Where was this story at? South this, Carolina, yeah, this was, oh, uh, this South, South Carolina, Carolina yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they I could see a one man. You right. don't need a lot of people to man Waffle House in uh, <laughs> West Columbia, South Carolina. Apparently, it's a it's a one man show down at their Waffle House at three a.m. That's funny. <laughs> okay, where where are we at? It's a product that could steal the heart of any cheese head. Wine and beer glasses made out of cheese, but That's the price. Gross. $5,000 for a set. <laughs> uh, the bank-busting drinking receptacles are being offered as a promotion by Finlandia Cheese in honor of Finland's 100th anniversary as an independent nation on December 6th. Uh, the beer mug is made from Gruyere cheese and holds 16 ounces of beverage. The company uh, recommends stout, bock, or wheat beer, none of which uh, you will be able to afford after dropping five grand on a beer glass. Uh, the wine glass is an eight-ounce stemless uh, sculpted from Gouda. That goes best, apparently, with uh, red wines like Merlot. Do you eat the cup later? I would imagine. Yeah, why not? I would be, I don't know. Or do you just keep pouring, like, different wines in there until, like, the cup just erodes? Yeah, I would think I would think it'd be a one-time-use thing, you know. That cheese is, is, isn't stain, even that expensive. You'd stain your Gouda. <laughs> like, yeah. you could probably go buy enough yeah. Gouda and make a cup. Right, right. Yeah. from Meyer. Like, just get on a potter's wheel with some cheese. Yeah, it'd have to be really well sculpted. Yeah. yeah. Potter's it's probably not. Cheese. We should it's look up a... pictures. It probably looks terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's some like yeah. kindergarten, over. like clay, <laughs> yeah. clay sculpture. It's a good thing they didn't make it out of Swiss. It just everything would run right out. That'd be yeah. That'd be stupid. Yeah, the cheese. I don't know. I don't know what that one tastes like. With the first one with the beer. Gruyere. Pie. Yeah. Probably tastes like cheese. Probably tastes horrible. Like a Where foot. was this at? Yeah. Norway. <laughs> uh, Finland. Finland. It's probably bitter. Close. Yeah. What's that? It's probably bitter. Probably yeah. Probably bitter. Let me tell you what kind of beer you should put in it, which means they go ugh. This beer's not good in this <laughs> yeah. cup. Yep, you should put something else in there because this doesn't work. Oh, let's see. We're a homeowner in uh, Sacramento County, California, is down in the dumps after an Amazon delivery con- contractor left a pile of feces in his front of his house. Uh, Nemi Bautista wasn't home on Tuesday when the driver pooped in his in front of his house. He saw the excrement evidence when he came home 
and then checked his surveillance cameras and noticed the driver squatting in the passenger side of his truck. <laughs> I didn't order this crap. So, yeah. <laughs> what is this? Yep. <laughs> what was it? Amazon? Yeah, Amazon. Amazon. They, they deliver some crap. Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> this, this is what you ordered. Just dropped it in the driveway like all the other packages. Yeah. And the bad thing is the homeowner was sitting there trying to remember what he ordered when he was drunk the other night. <laughs> <laughs> he may have. Well, Can't say for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. another reason. You ordered a wine glass made out of cheese. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he ate it on the way there. That's what you get. It's another reason for the delivery. Because Amazon wants their delivery people to possibly have keys to your house now. So, so that's, can, that's a great idea. So they can leave put your bigger packages. packages. Yeah, well, leave yeah. their packages inside the house. Well, yeah, he'd have been able to go to the restroom. It would have been better if the drone would have delivered Presumably, the he would have gone to the restroom. Maybe <laughs> he'd, he'd have left the it drone, on the stairs. Drone the delivered drone. The crap. He's yeah. in the back, but so he shits in the drone. I didn't mean Poof. to guys. And then... Uh, <laughs> I didn't hear nothing. He flies the drone to the well, guy's we're talking, driveway. We're talking about delivery drivers, so he ships. Yeah, he ships. ships. Yeah, he ships on the ships. drone. And the drone delivers the shipment on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's all a bunch of shipping uh, it's like almost an hour i did good <laughs> I, i'm impressed i really am <laughs> yeah when you gotta go you gotta go that's yeah yeah no. exactly if we used to go in five gallon buckets in the back of oh, my, my gosh we, <laughs> we would no, i with, did similar work and we would either use the customer's restroom or well, no we would be leave. like in an alley working on a telephone pole have our ladders out cones yeah. out and all of a sudden, you're on a pole, and like, oh no, Pepto moments. it's going to take 20 minutes to put everything in the van, yeah. and then another 10. To get- I have so you just, seven at so you yeah. just have somebody hold yeah. a bucket underneath you while you're still no, up you come on the down, pole. <laughs> and you would take like a like a like a Walmart bag and put it in your bucket, and then you, you would, do a liner first. Yeah, you nice. line it. You know, well, yeah. that after the first. Then well, you, yeah, he's not yeah. an animal. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then, you know, since all construction workers or like servicemen have like a pile of napkins in their vans, because all we eat is fast sure. food. You just grab a pile of McDonald's napkins, go in the back, do your thing, and tie the bag off and find a trash can in an alley to leave it in. Right. If you can't find somebody's lawn. Saves my pants that day. Huh. <laughs> huh. Yep, the things you don't know about utility workers. Oh, dude. Yeah. If you see a utility worker standing with the doors shut close to his sides, like he don't have them wide open, he's just standing with the doors, he's probably taking a pee in a bottle. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I've had to do that quite a few times. Yeah. Gatorade bottles are the best. They have a bigger mouth opening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they can We're, hold like 32 is, this ounces. Is a, this is an educational program. All today. you kids out there wanting to yeah. become a construction worker. Oh, wow. Well. <sighs> Let's see. What do we <laughs> What do we got next? An Australian TV host uh, came within inches of serious injury or worse when a science experiment went badly wrong during a live segment. A uh, science teacher slash YouTuber Jake Strickling uh, which you could substitute for Mike Canistero. This is Australia's Canistero. He was a guest on the show uh, Studio 10 earlier this week where he mixed liquid nitrogen in cola bottles, causing them to blast off like miniature rockets when he turned them upside down. One of the show's hosts, Natasha, mm-hmm. not Natasha, Natasha Belling, held the bottle that Strickling fil- as, as Strickling filled it. However, she seemed uncertain how to hold it. She said, I've done it twice. You should have been watching. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, Belling replied that I wasn't watching. Uh, that's when the segment took a, almost took a tragic turn. Uh, the bottle turned and, uh, turned the bottle to its side. And instead of, uh, upside down, it shot right in her face. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it so just, uh, but see without stuff like that, you don't get good YouTube videos. Isn't exactly, liquid nitrogen, exactly. the stuff that stopped the T2 and yeah. Terminator 2. It'll like, freeze anything yeah, it yeah. touches. Like, right, yeah. For the yeah, most part. She almost got a face full. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. so mike be careful when you're doing your live science with mike segments don't let somebody blow their face off with a bottle full of uh liquid nitrogen or do just make or sure you get it, yeah, on get it on camera always be recording <laughs> Wait, which is weird. why doesn't it freeze plastic <laughs> that's a very good question yeah i think it would like when people have acid that eats anything <laughs> It the acid a, comes out of a container yeah, that it is not It eating. was a bottle made out of Gouda cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, liquid that was nitrogen Gruyere. does that was not Gruyere. eat that through Gouda cheese. Yep, Everybody yep. knows. <laughs> yep, liquid nitrogen could not freeze the Gruyere because <laughs> that is an unfreezable cheese. <laughs> oh, okay. One more, one more news story, and then we're going to go have a good cry. Uh, it's, it's news that, uh, that may be hard to hear. 
or sorry, hard to bear, but the uh, abominable snowman may just be a big Asian bear. Uh, Charlotte Linkvist, a uh, biologist specializing in bears, has analyzed DNA specimens re- purportedly from yetis found in the Himalayan mountains for a new for a new paper published in the British Science Journal, Proceedings of the Royal Society B. The nine samples came from so-called yeti bones, uh, fur, and other animal material. After rigorous testing, they all turned out to be bear parts, except for one quote yeti tooth that actually belonged to a dog, according to the Washington Post. Aww. All the samples that were supposed to be Yetis matched down matched brown and black bears that are living in the in the region, according to uh, Lengfist. So Yetis are not real. Yeti could be a dog mixed with a bear. It's a bear dog. Bear yes. dog. Man, bear, pig. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they have a show there called Finding Yeti? They should. Like we they have should. Finding Bigfoot. Yeah, and they never found him. Either. Yeah, it's a very elusive, a very elusive uh, man bear pig dog. <laughs> man bear pig dog. Uh, it's a bear bear dog. A bear. Yeah, that was just that. That was a dud. That was one of those news stories. It's like, yeah, this will be fun, and no, nothing. This is it's like an open. This is the open mic of news stories, is what this yeah. is. <laughs> you think it's going to be funny, and nothing. Get nothing at all from that. Me. Happens a I lot. Tell you. But we'll do one more. Uh, we'll do one more Christmas story. A Santa working in a Toronto shopping center uh, dealt Fake. with an angry adult rather than an honored child this past weekend. A cell phone video posted online shows a woman in a gray and black dress yelling profanities at Santa on duty at the Dufferin Mall. She's saying, "Do you have a sleigh, you effing d head?" Since I can't, say, <laughs> do you have a sleigh? She can be heard yelling in the video. Calling Santa names is bad enough, but the woman took the next step by declaring the jolly old Saint Nick doesn't exist. You're not magic. You're not even real. I heard about it when I was a kid. She yelled, "You're not real, man." <laughs> <laughs> I heard about it when I was a kid. When she was a kid, she learned that Santa was not real, and she had to go ruin for Christmas, ruin Christmas for every kid. So was she the, the other Dufferin guy? Mall. That's the first guy's like wife. I think so. Yes. North Pole, Alaska. Yeah, they go to different areas. They just they, they, they just, never they travel separately to destroy Christmas. They're like the Grinch and his wife. <laughs> Grinchette. They're just Christmas protesters. They just yeah. show up. <laughs> yeah. Well, not just Christmas and protesters. They get Santa ran over protest. by sleighs. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> they won't, they won't get out of the way. That's what happened. The song Santa got Grandma got run over by a reindeer is actually a a real story, <laughs> and it was their mother. <laughs> so they have spent their days. Seeking out mall Santas to berate. You killed my mom. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even real. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just wait till their other brother and Nigel Montoya shows up. Yeah. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> so I'm yeah, that's uh, we've we've officially ruined Christmas, and it's not even for here a bunch yet. of college kids. For a bunch of college yeah. kids that still believe in Santa, I'm sure there are some. Once in a while, now beating himself in the head like he didn't know. Yeah. So yeah. stupid. <laughs> I keep looking at this poster behind you for some reason. Like I'm like they look like Dayton comics that they were made into cartoon characters. Yeah, they, they like kind of do. They're Scotty Mays. Scotty Mays, yeah, that's, obviously. That's, that, that right there. That's, that's, uh, Ed, that's Ed John. Thug, Ed John. Thug Ed John. Uh, Titus. <laughs> What'd you call it? Thug, Thug Ed John. Thug Ed John, and then Adrian Miller. Like yeah, the, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> Is that Titus on the far end? That's Titus it, when he had his long hair. Or it's Aaron Phillips on some <laughs> kind of drug. <laughs> Like some kind of drug that so made him words, super just, gone. In other words, just Aaron Phillips. We need, we need yeah, <laughs> but like deep into like a meth or a coke addiction. Oh, like okay, that guy okay. looks a lot. No, that's gonna be, it. Could be Colin. Yeah, that's. Uh... We need to take a picture of that and tag it on Facebook so people who, who might listen to this <laughs> tag all four of them. Yeah. <laughs> so like they hear this, they happen to listen to this, they're like, "What are they talking about?" Yeah. <laughs> but that's totally Scotty Mays. Definitely, that's definitely Scotty. We got that one nailed. All right. Uh, so, uh, we'll go, we'll go over one more time. You guys got any, uh, got any social media you want to plug any, anything you want to plug at all? Let's Friday, plug. Friday night at Wiley's. Friday night at Wiley's is going to be a uh, comedy $10 showcase. $10 online. A lot of good comedies. Follow me on Tinder and at Plenty of Fish. And if, if you're, if you're brave, <laughs> no. you can follow Travis no. Charles on dating sites. Twitter. Is that Travis Charles? I don't know. My YouTube mm-hmm. channels, Travis Charles. Well, yeah, watch my videos. I get paid for my videos if you watch them. Do you? Yeah. Not a whole lot like I used to. Like, it's dropped down quite considerably. 
I have, but, didn't know you had videos. Yeah. You, you should promote those. I've videos. got like two and a half million views altogether. Really? He yep. goes, Travis talks. I used to actually, I, no, like I used to actually talk, be, I used to be pretty popular with YouTube. Fishing like, stuff. Really? What I was happened? number one comedian in the UK for like three months in a row. What happened? Uh, got divorced and then didn't want to make videos anymore for a while. I would think getting divorced would help yeah. your comedy. And by UK, he means upper Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, the UK you're thinking of. Good call. <laughs> You got me. Yeah. <laughs> My whole All life's right. a lie. <laughs> yeah, we know. We know. All right. Well, uh, that's 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 enough. <laughs> well, th- uh, Joe, Travis, thanks for coming in. It's always good yep, to see you thanks guys. Thanks for having us laugh. again. I don't know why you keep doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll probably keep doing something here, I reckon. See you in April. See you. <laughs> yeah, well, we might see Travis again some other time. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, both of you. And uh, we'll... Uh, Probably probably won't be listening next week, will you? But I'll still be here. So we'll see you then. This has been the Life Radio Show on WWSU 106.9 with your host, Don Smith. The Life is also available in podcast form on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blueberry, and YouTube, as well as on Eventide Entertainment's podcast network. Be sure to like the Life Radio Show on Facebook, and if you have any comments or suggestions, email thelife1069 at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Now get out there and enjoy some live comedy this week. You can check out wileyscomedy.com for all your upcoming shows. Overwhelms me. A brutal presence. Overwhelms me! I am a brutal presence.